In this clip, we will zoom in on energy storage in batteries, or what is sometimes called the missing link in decentralized energy systems. I will explain how electricity storage is not just a technological innovation, but encompasses social and political issues as well. The way we use energy is changing. Citizens increasingly produce their own green electricity. At the same time, domestic electricity consumption is rising due to factors such as more people driving electric vehicles and using electronic devices in their household. These developments pose challenges to balancing el energy supply and demand throughout the grid. Solar panels only generate electricity during the day, but a peak in domestic consumption takes place in the evening. Storage of renewable energy at domestic or local level is increasingly seen as a solution to this peak load problem. Batteries may serve as a buffer to flatten out the peaks and troughs in energy supply and demand. There is a growing market for home batteries, and stakeholders in the energy system explore the benefits of storage in pilot projects and living labs. That energy storage in batteries is a technological development may be clear, but how can we understand this as a social technical innovation? Well, energy storage is always a particular combination of technology and social organization. First, there is the hardware, that is the batteries themselves. These come in different shapes and sizes, from small home batteries to bulkier batteries. Battery systems also include advanced software, such as algorithms that determine charging and discharging. Second, there is the social organization. The battery systems can be owned, controlled and used in diverse ways, by householders themselves, by local groups of households, or by other stakeholders in the energy system. Since there are several options, in both technical and social respects, energy storage at local levels can take very different forms, with different roles for citizens when co-creating the local energy system. I will present four examples of storage, examples that show different combinations of technology and social organization. Here we see an individual household with a battery. With home batteries, People can save the excess solar energy they generate during the day for use at a later time. By doing so, they can become more autonomous. However, households can also share their battery with others, such as energy providers. In this case, a party such as an energy company operates and controls the battery. The battery is charged or discharged based on the needs of the grid at that very moment. Householders receive some form of compensation for providing these grid services. People can also share their batteries with other households and engage in storage collectively. For example, the surplus energy that is produced locally can be stored in a large neighborhood battery. The stored energy can be used at a later stage and shared within the community. This can increase the community's energy autonomy. It is now also possible to connect home batteries in different geographical locations via ICT. In what is called a virtual power plant, individual batteries are aggregated to form a single pool of stored energy. This energy can, for instance, be shared between the participating households. It can be used to support the grid or it can be traded on the electricity market. These examples show that in each socio-technical configuration, households have a different role and sometimes engage more actively and sometimes more passively in the organization of energy consumption and production. Households can engage in storage individually or collectively. They can aim for autonomy or integration in the wider energy system. Because storage is a new technology, it is not clear yet which technologies will work best and what the role of citizens and other stakeholders will be. 
This is one of the reasons why energy storage is further tested in living labs and studied by both technical engineers and social science researchers. One example of such a living lab is the Citizen Virtual Power Plant project in Amsterdam. In this project, a grid operator, an energy supplier, a software company and citizens work together to implement and test a virtual power plant with home batteries. 50 people in a neighborhood in Amsterdam who already had solar panels on their roofs were recruited as participants. The project partners tested technologies and developed algorithms for energy exchange. Our research group at Wageningen University contributes to this living lab by elaborating on social questions surrounding storage. We examine what specific roles for citizens are implied and made possible by a particular technological design of the virtual power plant. We want to find out how co-creation is perceived by different stakeholders, including the householders themselves. What roles are made available to citizens and how eager are they to actually take up these roles? To what extent do the roles as envisaged by energy providers and software developers match citizens' needs and values concerning storage? As we have seen, the role of energy storage in the future energy system should not merely be examined in technical terms, but also as a question of citizen engagement in energy production and consumption. <laughs>